Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I'll be giving you a quick guide on a new feature from Nvidia called VRSS. Now since my video a couple of weeks back on how to boost the graphics of the Oculus Quest when using Oculus Link, I've had a lot of people ask me, well Mike, what about when I'm using a PC VR headset like the Valve Index, the Pimax, Vive, Oculus Rift S and Windows Mixed Reality? How can I make that look better? Well, I should have you covered in this video for those of you on the PC side. In this video, I'll be explaining what VRSS is, why it's important for VR, what you'll need and how to enable it. And then finally, I'll be testing it out myself with some VR games and I'll give you my conclusion at the end of the video. Now, just so you're aware, right now you can only enable VRSS if you own a Turing-based NVIDIA graphics card, such as the RTX 2080, 2070, and 2060 cards. Now, this might also be possible with the GTX 1660 and 1650, as they're also Turing-based graphics cards, although I've yet to have this confirmed. In this video, there's also going to be some extra practical tips and advice on how to make your VR games and experience look better, even if you don't own the latest and greatest NVIDIA graphics cards to take advantage of VRSS. So I hope you guys and girls find this video useful. And without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into the requirements of VRSS and how to set it up, first let me answer the question, what is VRSS? Well, VRSS stands for Variable Rate Supersampling, and it's a technique from NVIDIA to improve the image quality in VR games on PC without sacrificing on performance. Well, Mike, that sounds great, I hear you say, but what the heck is supersampling? Well, to keep it simple, supersampling is when you push the resolution higher than your headset's native resolution. This results in sharper images in the headset, which is particularly useful for reading text text or seeing finer details in games. When using Steam VR, the Oculus Debug Tool or the Oculus Tray Tool, you can increase the supersampling in the settings by applying a higher percentage multiplier. For example, setting the supersampling at 1.4 in the settings is increasing the resolution by 140%. So a setting of 2, for example, would be increasing the resolution by 200%. You can also set supersampling on a per application basis within Steam VR, or if you want to do this on the Oculus platform, I definitely suggest using the Oculus Tray Tool, which I've linked in the description down below. It's a really useful tool for tweaking settings if you have a Rift or a Rift S. Setting the supersampling and increasing the resolution is all great, however it does come at the cost of performance and should only really be increased if you have the performance headroom spare, as otherwise frame rate will suffer, which is a common cause of motion sickness. Now SteamVR has a nifty little feature which shows you a recommended supersampling rate based on your PC's specs. Now, if you want to push things even further, I'd highly recommend monitoring the frame rates by using a performance overlay in the headset. And you can easily do this using Steam VR or the Oculus Debug tool. Now, this will ensure that you're hitting the desired frame rate and you can monitor this in game. Now, when applying super sampling, this resolution increase is applied across the whole image sent to your headset. And this brings us nicely back to VRSS. VRSS is where your system can dynamically add up to eight times super sampling, but this is just applied to the center of the image. And this is generally where your eyes are focused when playing a VR game or whilst the edges of your peripheral vision, which you don't necessarily notice in game, are rendered at the default rate. The other cool thing about VRSS is that it intelligently applies only when there is performance headroom available in order to maintain the headset's frame rate. As only the center of the display is being super sampled, instead of the whole image with traditional super sampling, this should provide a performance saving all whilst increasing the image quality where it matters most, which is very clever stuff indeed. And because all of this work is done on the driver level from Nvidia, it shouldn't mean any additional work from developers to take advantage of this technology, which is another bonus. Similar technology is actually used in the Oculus Quest, which enables the headset to provide good visuals on the Snapdragon mobile processor, and this is also referred to as fixed 
foveated rendering. When using the Oculus Quest, sometimes it can be noticeable, particularly in graphically intensive games such as Vader Immortal, where you can see the image deteriorating at the edges when you move your eyes away from the center of the display. Alongside fixed foveated rendering, companies are already experimenting with VR headsets using dynamic foveated rendering. And this is where the super sampled center will shift dynamically depending on what part of the display your eyes are looking at. But this requires eye tracking for this to work, so don't expect this to be the standard for some time. So now I can hear you asking, well, Mike, this all sounds amazing, but how do I unleash the power of VRSS? Well, first up, like I said at the beginning, you'll need an NVIDIA graphics card featuring the Turing architecture, ideally the RTX 2080, 2070, or 2060 graphics cards. You'll need to update to the latest NVIDIA driver, which at the time of this video is 441.87. Now you can do this manually through the NVIDIA website or by using the NVIDIA GeForce Experience tool, which I use to quickly and easily update my graphics card drivers. Once you've restarted your machine, you'll need to ensure that your traditional super sampling is set at the default 100% and now we're ready to apply VRSS. All you need to do to apply VRSS is right click anywhere on your desktop and select the NVIDIA control panel and navigate to manage 3D settings. Now right now around 20 games are confirmed to be supported with Boneworks being the most prominent title which is the one that I'm going to be using for my testing. I've listed all the VRSS supported games in the description down below and this includes games from both Steam and Oculus. At the moment you need to manually enable VRSS for each game that you own but hopefully this will change in the future. As shown here with Boneworks, scroll down to Virtual Reality, Variable Rate Super Sampling and change the setting to Adaptive. And now it's for the fun part which is testing it out in Boneworks on the Valve Index to see if VRSS lives up to its claims. Now in my testing, I'm using a PC equipped with an RTX 2080 Ti, an i9-9900K processor with 64 gigabytes of RAM. For my testing, I'm playing Boneworks on the Valve Index at 90 Hertz mode with both VRSS on and off to compare the results. Now I found out with a bit of research that VRSS is directly linked to MSAA anti-aliasing. So I ensured that that was cranked up to eight times in the Boneworks graphical settings menu. And I have to say, I was actually underwhelmed at the difference that it made as it actually caused significant dips in frame rate without really adding anything to the visual department that I could notice. Now I used FPS VR to monitor two walkthroughs of the streets level in Boneworks for a side by side comparison. So first up, here's the game running with VRSS turned on with adaptive mode selected and traditional super sampling set at the default 100%. And as you can see, the gameplay becomes jittery with dips in frame rate, with reprojection hitting around 7 to 8% at times, which really isn't ideal. And here's the game running with VRSS turned off with 1.4 super sampling applied. And as you can see, it provided a much smoother gameplay experience throughout with less than 1% reprojection. And sadly, these results were consistent throughout all my testing with VRSS, which is a real shame. So here's my conclusion. At the moment, I wouldn't recommend turning VRSS on due to the frame rate spikes it causes when using it. I would stick to traditional super sampling for now and monitoring the frame rates with an overlay such as FPS VR. As in my testing, it was a much smoother experience, which in my books is much, much more important than visual fidelity when it comes to a VR gameplay experience. So VRSS might be underwhelming right now with its performance actually having a negative impact and it's limited to the higher end NVIDIA graphics cards. However, with that said, it's certainly a step in the right direction on PC to optimize VR games to look better in the future without sacrificing on performance. And although it's only available for touring cards right now, it's paving the way for VR to be more accessible in the future. So great looking VR experiences like Boneworks can be run on more modest hardware. As of course, right now you need to invest in a pretty high spec VR machine. Hopefully in the future, Nvidia can iron out the performance issues that I experienced in my testing and streamline the process so we can just set a global setting to be applied to all the supported VR games in your library rather than manually turning it on for each supported game that we own. And I also hope that there's a way to know if it's working and at what level super sampling is being automatically applied. This could be done with some sort of overlay that you can turn on and off, for example. 
So sadly, we still have some way to go with VRSS, and it isn't the game changer for VR that we all hope for right now. Okay, so there we have it. That's my guide and testing on the latest VRSS feature from NVIDIA. Now, although VRSS is a step in the right direction, right now it doesn't make a world of difference in terms of the visuals, and it definitely needs some more work to keep the gameplay experience smooth, which is so, so important in VR. So I wouldn't recommend going out and selling a kidney to go and buy one of the latest RTX graphics cards for VRSS right now. However, in the future, I do feel that VRSS will be really useful when we get higher resolution headsets, and with VRSS, we'll be able to run them on fairly modest hardware, making VR more accessible to the masses. Of course, right now, only a handful of games are actually supported with VRSS support, but I'm confident the list will continue to grow with future NVIDIA driver updates. But of course, let me know what you guys and girls think of VRSS in the comments down below. Have you tried it out yourself? Did you notice any difference? Or like me, did it affect your performance? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Leave a like if you liked the video and you found it useful. Make sure you're subscribed for all my future content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.